Okay, hi boys and girls. Um, Corey and I are uh, back again to talk to you a little bit about um, oh, connectors and uh, screws, my all-time favorite, and why we think that there's some definite big giant opportunities for Ford to reduce cost, reduce complexity, um, reduce poor quality, and reduce weight, and reduce everything else that we don't really want to have, including labor and confusion. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about what we found on the, uh, on the Mach-E. And after we're done with that, we're going to compare it to a couple of other different designs. When we're done with that, I'm going to talk to you about what happened at Ford when I was on sealing and fastening at Ford and how we applied things that were kind of like uh, unhappy with here and how other people have made things happen that are a little bit better than what we've seen here on the, um, on the Mach-E. Anyway, let's start it off with Corey giving us a little description on tools and screws. So an electric vehicle, you have to distribute the high voltage electricity all over the vehicle. And what we see right here is the ports that leave the battery of the Mustang Mach-E. Right here is the input for the high voltage um, DC supercharging. This is the output for the front motor. This is the output for the rear motor. And over here is the output for the ancillary high voltage components. The focus of our video today is to look at the fasteners. Notice that the fasteners are different on each one of the ports. There's also a common number of fasteners, four. This is not in the equation because um, it's low voltage. So we're not, gonna, we're not gonna talk too much about that. We're only gonna talk about the things that are kind of looking like they're orange. And by the way, I wanna find out what color orange is your favorite. So uh, <laughs> in the comments, uh, send, us, uh, send us your, um, your, uh, your opinions and we'll, uh, we'll tally them up. Now, if you see the fasteners on this white paper, the first fastener is a Torx fastener. The second is a flanged hex. The third is a smaller uh, hex with a washer. The fourth is a small hex flange where the flange is much larger than the hex. And we're going to move on in a progression to look at the high voltage components. The next component. But wait, one more thing. I want you to notice that this and this and this and this are all different. And there's a reason why I'm bringing this up because I used to also have to try and track down tools and buy them. And this, this is a nightmare. When these heads are different, when these heads are all different, the operators on the line need different tools to put things together. Yeah. Each of these connectors attach to aluminum substrates, this aluminum substrate and that aluminum sub substrate. The fasteners that are used to secure those aluminum pieces to the battery case are common, but they are additional fasteners uh, compared to other competitors that we see. The next item is the DC to DC converter. This, is, this receives high voltage electricity in this port and converts to low voltage to use for the vehicle system. The fastener on this port, once again, is different. It is a Torx head with no washer. The next item is the PTC heater, which we covered in a couple other episodes. This uses a pentalobe security. And if we can get in there and get a good shot, you can see what a pentalobe security looks. It's got a pin in the center. Both of those connectors have four fasteners. The high voltage AC compressor is next. Once again, four fasteners, different fastener. This is an inverted Torx, tamper proof. It's very difficult for us to get off. The next item is the onboard charger. This receives a line from the charge port if you're charging your vehicle and the input from the charge port uses a um, standard hex flange bolt. This hex flange is not common with any of the other bolts that we saw. The next port is the output to the battery for charging. This is a standard Phillips head with two, fat, two washers. You can see it has a lock washer and a standard washer. The next port we see is a high voltage output from the inverter um, for the rear 
motor. And this is a TE connector with four fasteners. And if you notice, the fasteners are once again different. It is a hex flange. Now the inverter for the front. The front inverter is separate. There's two high voltage connections here. You have the high voltage input, um, which uses a fastener right here, which is a Torx two, with two, two washers. And then the output from this inverter, uh, there is no orange. It's actually inside of here. So if you can get a close up there, um, these connectors right here are secured with three bolts each. So, so far, this is the first connector that used less than four bolts. The bolts are larger, and they are common from the output from the inverter and the input to the front motor. And here is the input spot for the front motor. Um, so, in summary, getting the high voltage electricity all around the Ford Mustang Mach-E is accomplished through a wide array of connectors. None of them have common fasteners except for the output of the inverter for the front to the input of the uh, front motor. Now, Sandy, so, did you want to show something well, over here? Well, great. Right, before we do that, though, I want to just bring up one thing. Um, this bolt right here is the closest that we've got to what Ford used to specify is mandatory for this kind of work. So it's an external hex. It has a UBS or a unified bearing surface kind of uh, kind of uh, captured or sorry not captured washer but uh, built-in uh, flange head, and it has what we used to call the magic radius, which means that this thing will not um, this will not cross thread. It's especially important not to cross-thread in aluminum componentry. And why is that? Well, because cross-threading in aluminum tears it to pieces, and the only way you can fix it is by drilling a new hole and then putting in a, uh, an insert to take the place, because once aluminum is buggered, it's not fixable. So these are the, whoops, these are the only uh, threaded fasteners that we see that come close. This one is the same or similar, but these are the only ones that come close to what was used to be mandatory when I was in charge of, uh, when I was in charge of uh, 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 fastening at, at powertrain. So Corey, um, or sorry, uh, let's just have a look at what, uh, what happened on the ID4. So I threw a lot of rocks at the ID4, but I did do one thing that I thought was uh, nice for them, and that was to complement them on this one large component that, uh, that uh, basically is all the connections that you've got into the battery pack. That would be equivalent to what you see going on here. The, the component tree is a little different, but in essence it's the same. But still, there's something here that just drives me crazy. Why is it I need this many fasteners to hold down this array of connectors? What in the world is going on? There's no reason why at least half of the fasteners here shouldn't disappear. Okay, somebody's going to come back and say, oh, bridging and don't, don't do it. I mean, after uh, two years and, uh, and four million bucks of Ford Motor Company's hard-earned money, trying to figure out how to put stuff together, it's going to be very difficult for you to argue with me about why we couldn't get rid of a few of these fasteners. So why are we so excited about it? Well, let's have a look over here on the Tesla products. So Tesla has um, uh, a different scheme uh, for putting things together because quite frankly, they, a lot of the stuff that they've got is integrated, so they don't even have connectors. The connectors are all done inside the different boxes. If we have a look here, you can see these are three connectors that they've got each one has exactly the same, exactly the same fastener. This fastener is, it would get high marks for me. It's a little expensive, but it's got a dog point because it's going into aluminum. It's got um, a shoulder. Uh, and the reason for the shoulder is because I want to make sure 
that I don't crush the plastic. I want to have a defined amount of, um, of crush between that seal and these seals as well and this, uh, this fastener right here. Plastic does have a tendency to creep. So we go over here and we look at this and we say, oh, we look at the end here and that fastener takes the same uh, tool as this one and that one and this one and that one and this one. And quite frankly, that's where Tesla's winning. Their batteries, or sorry, their, their fasteners are almost identical one to another right, right down the road. So this is their, uh, this is the, um, um, basically for the, uh, for the high voltage, uh, um, uh, what's the Hang word? Uh, so this connector is for the DC supercharging end. Yeah. Um, this connector in front is for your front motor. This one is for your rear motor. And this is for the ancillary components. So on Tesla, um, their DC to DC converter, as well as their um, high voltage conversion to send to the AC compressor, that's handled inside. And all of that is coming out of this port. So if we take a look over here at the inverters, again, we can see that this connector and that one, both of them are held together with only two screws and they're the same screws. They're exactly the same. And again, dog point. Now I'm not a fan of captured washers and I, and I will tell you that I, I don't think that uh, uh, spring washers of any kind really and truly hold anything down, but I'm not gonna have that argument today. In essence, I'm happy about that. And I'm happy that this Torx and that Torx is exactly the same. So if we have a look, oh, there's one more, um, and that's on the, uh, on the compressor. Corey, why don't you? Yeah, the AC compressors are provided by a supplier. So this connector is similar to what we saw on all of those components on the Ford Mustang Mach-E. You have four, one, two, three, four, all going around and it is very similar uh, in style. So we looked at everybody's stuff, and here it looks like, well, geez, there's almost nothing here for Tesla, and there's all this other stuff for over here, but in essence, that's what happens when you get into a, uh, an integrated type of design, where a lot of these modules don't have to have their own separate um, connectors. That's the best way to do it. A, the next best thing is how do we get to the point where we don't have all this different array? Think about it. We're looking at how many different screws? One, two, three, four, five, six, sorry, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. There's 13 different screws holding down connectors. This is not rocket science. When you look at what's going on here with the ID4, they only have one. This is, this is the kind of thing that, that causes grief and causes uh, mistakes within the organization. Somebody has to fix these things. How many different tools am I gonna need? How many different storage bins do I need? At Ford, if we could get rid of, in, in the olden days, if we could get rid of a part number, we were looking at $75,000 just to have that part number there. And look at all the part numbers we've got here. And by the way, somebody has to store all the tools. I, had to, I got stuck with that job for a while as well. The deal here is that we've got to start looking at what's commonization. How do we standardize on things that really don't count that much? This is something where commonization could really be handy. So let me tell you what, uh, what was going on at Ford a long time ago. This is, um, this is similar to one of the books that I used to hand out uh, a long time ago when we did a lot of training over at Ford Motor Company. Inside, inside is a, a little chart. It's called the Good Design Principles. And on this side, guess what? It says, um, it says, if you want poor quality, add more screws. That kind of, that, this was invented at Ford. This is what, what we developed at Ford when I was there. Why aren't, why aren't we doing this? Why did we do this? Why did we go in and say, hey, there's something wrong with doing things in this fashion? Well, one of the reasons was because we found out just what screws were like. 
And actually, in the study that we did at Ford, and like I say, this is, this is antiques. It's been around a long time. What does that say? Well, it says here, in a Ford study of mechanical devices, it was found that 70% to 90% of all failures were directly attributable to threaded fastener. Why have they got four here instead of two? Somebody's going to come along and say, oh, the reason for that is because we want better quality. OK, that's great. Here's my buddy, Dr. Deming. Dr. Deming came into Ford Motor Company, and he, taught, he tried to tell us that two is better than four. And the reason in rationale is because just because you've got four doesn't mean all four are going to be cranked down. It's easier to control two things than it is four things. So this guy used to say, he used to give a speech, a lot of speeches, but he gave one speech that talked about the face of, qual of poor quality. And this is the face that he used right here. This is a very famous and failed operation that happened in, uh, from the, the British trying to get around the, uh, the top of Canada. And this poor bugger was one of the first guys to die. And why did he die? He died because the quality of the food that they ate and the quality of the, basically the tools they had to work with were so inferior and so multiple that they couldn't, they couldn't survive from day one. When you talk about quality, I always think of Dr. Deming and this, this face. What I want to do is I want to try and get people to start thinking about, about what they really and truly need to do if they're going to get into the threaded fastening world. Now, some of you guys are going to say, well, a threaded fastener is a threaded fastener and it'll always work. Well, it won't. See this right here? This is called a Michigan screw, or sometimes called a Chicago screw. This is what happens when people start thinking, ah, I made a mistake, how do I get around it? Screws are not your friend. Screws are always going to be a problem. Why aren't these things snapped into place? Now, I wanted to show you something that was really high voltage, but unfortunately, when we did our cleanup, it got thrown out. It, that connector, was, was basically a snap-in connector. It snapped into, um, into a, 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 an aluminum cage, and, and it was doing between 1,200 and 2,400 volts. That's a lot more than anything we're ever going to see coming into this, this operation here. Why do we want to do that? We want to try and do what we can do in order to shorten the tail of quality. So I got another book for you to read. Ellie Rat, uh, Goldrat uh, was another guy that I, I ran into quite a bit. He talks about how we can be um, excited about making changes like this and how much impact they can have down the road. I want, I'm not here to throw rocks at, uh, at Ford or Tesla or anybody else in the EV world. All I want to do is say, you know what? I don't know why no one's teaching this stuff anymore or why it's falling off the table, but we've got to get to a point where we can look at this stuff and say, this is the right way to go. We need to do it this way, not the old way. And, and when you start basically screwing into aluminum, I can guarantee you, I, I can't remember the numbers off the top of my head right now, but I can guarantee you that if you have a screw that looks like this, with no dog point and no way of, uh, of, of determining whether or not it's going to go in correctly, you are going to have a failure. And when that, when that fails, you're throwing away a casting. And I can also tell you that if I have a hundred of these and four of these, guess what? I'm going to get into a situation where I shut the whole damn line down because I haven't got one of these. There's an old adage for the one of a nail the battle was lost, it was a horseshoe nail, and it's a real, a real example. What we need to do is shrink, not expand, the number of things that we're doing on the assembly line. Now, I realize I'm going to get a lot of static from people who are going to say, well, that's because it's a commodity. I, can, I almost swore, but I didn't. Um, I can tell you for sure, if you're Ford Motor Company, you can dictate either something that looks like this, you can either dictate something that looks like this, or you can, you can go over and say, oh, give me four screws, because I, I really like the idea of four screws. 
you can do whatever you want. If Tesla can do it, and they're a dinky company in comparison, Ford, GM, BMW, Mercedes, VW, Honda, Toyota, whomever can do the same thing. So with that, I will stop ranting, and uh, thank you all for, uh, for uh, putting up with this. <laughs> and uh, and uh, anyway, thank you, Corey, for, uh, for all, the, uh, all the assistance that you, uh, you give us all the time. And uh, stay tuned for more of what's going to happen down the road. By the way, um, we um, forgot the guy's name. Um, what's that guy's name that just gave us 27 grand? Cronall. So anyway, I'd like to, I'd like to throw out a, a great big thank you to Cronall, who, uh, who basically just bought a couple hours of my time for $27,000. That doesn't happen very often. I'd like to thank Cronell from the bottom of my heart. Uh, he's, a, he's a fan, he watches a lot, and he wants to make a new car. So, Cronell, you won't get this. You'll get that, not, not, a bunch of, uh, not a bunch of components. So anyways, thanks again for watching. Stay tuned, talk to you soon. Thank you, bye. <laughs>